Welcome to King Says So, a channel that advocates for one Africa, one land, one Africa, one language, one Africa, one currency, one Africa, one army. I wish to witness Africans all around the world united as one in our lifetime. Enjoy. At White Knot Technologies, we specialize in bags, embroidery, branded wear, and screen printing. We provide the finest quality for affordable price and fast turnaround time. We make sure you'll be satisfied with your order. Visit us at 18 Fisher Avenue, Epping. I am David Mahura, the head of political education in the ANC. Uh, this weekend we were hosting a national political education workshop. It's the first of its kind because the National Executive Committee has taken a decision to re-establish uh, the Department of Political Education and really massively roll out political education as part of the renewal of the ANC. What's up, ladies and gentlemen? It's your boy King King053, Mr. Easy Imali Ning Ning. And we pepeck pe 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 it again with another one. Guys, I just want to ask, okay? Uh, as I'm still asking, you can click the subscribe button. You can um, uh, like the video. This is your Pan-Africanist home. Here we are pro-African, pro-nationalizing everything that has to do with mines, uh, banks, land, everything that has to do with the good stuff that helps our African brothers and sisters. We are here to open the borders. We are here for a, a central processing unit, a central home affairs for the SADC of Africa, making sure that Namibia, Zimbabwe, Lesotho, and um, uh, what you call uh, Zambia, uh, Swaziland uh, people in, South in the SADC of Africa don't need a passport to cross the border. Nothing of that, of that nature. They just need to add their identity document just to 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 make sure that we record a movement at least. But no passports. A borderless SADC before we go to a borderless Central Africa, before we go to a borderless Western Africa, and then we go to a borderless Africa as a whole. Okay? So my question number one, before I get into this political school that the, the, the ANC is trying to to open um, and say, listen, we are we are trying to do the polit political education. My question is: is it's been ten years since um, that Tata Nelson Mandela passed away? I don't see, <laughs> I don't see any major celebrations. Maybe they're still gonna do it, but I mean, yesterday it marked ten years of the passing of uh, Tata Nelson Mandela. Um, yes, we do have uh, different opinions on him. Uh, even um, Chris Ahani, before he died, he expressed concerns about the negotiations between Mandela and the apartheid government. And obviously, we can see that those negotiations were actually pro-white instead of pro-black. But uh, Mandela was thinking in the lines of peace. You know, the Mandela that went into prison is not the Mandela that came out. So um, I think he was evaluating like a win-lose situation and a lose-lose situation. So in his in his eye and heart, I'm sure he wanted the best for African people, but. Uh, I'm sure he thought nah, but it, at, at this time and stage, it will be better to take the government power, even though we don't get the land, we don't get the minerals or whatever, we'll get those things later. And I believe it's the presidents that came after him that actually failed us as Africans and not necessarily him alone. Understand? Mbeki, Zuma, um, and now Cyril. Halima, they are the ones that actually failed us, understand? Because I believe every generation must have its political goal, their political agenda for each generation. And I believe Mandela's generation that went to exile, they fulfilled what they were supposed to do. And that is to take the powers of, of, um, of the apartheid regime. But the, 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 the Mbeki and Zuma generation were supposed to take control of the land, the minerals, and what, what, and they didn't. They did to a certain degree, but not to uh, satisfa uh, satisfaction of the, the African people. 
So I'm not sure if the ANC is still celebrating uh, Dada Mandela. I would use Dada Mandela because a lot of older people um, have a loyalty to uh, uh, Nelson Mandela. So I would use that in my campaigning for for elections 2024. I will definitely use that. I will even bring Mandela back in the T-shirt. And I call I call it the Mandela Spirit Volume Two. I don't know. I don't know. I'm just saying I would use Mandela more than I would use uh, Cyril or Zuma or whatever. I mean, on the T-shirts and everything, uh, everyone wants a T-shirt of Mandela. Uh, who wants a T-shirt of 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 Cyril Ramaphosa? Who? In this stage in time, <laughs> low shading is messing us up. Remember, they said low shading will stop on the well, what did they say 24 december you remember that listen to this when will load shedding end the 24th of december now are you that. confident that we're on the road to that fight <laughs> yeah so yeah it's difficult for the anc now the anc is doing something that i've always advocated for and i said it from the beginning the anc is not doing enough in terms of um conscientizing its members for its political goals educating them according to the political history of the ANC which is so rich which have got legends you know uh, people to celebrate Bosubuku Hood uh, Pixie and um, uh, who can I name uh, Hani uh, the many 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 Zuma many of the ex uh, ANC members, uh, some uh, have gone to the ancestor realm and some are still alive. You know, it's important for them to use that education and tell people, listen, we have lost our root as the ANC. We are now focusing in um, uh, enriching ourselves. It is time that we ANC go back to our roots and our roots is the love for the people. I, I so believe that the ANC has missed that mark. And I'm, I'm happy to see that they are trying to bring back that political education back to its structures. They want to open a small Anyana department and make sure that every month and every region in the, in the, in the country, there's some type of a political classes taking place and making sure that, listen, they, are, they want to um, bring back that, uh, that knowledge. Why are they doing that? Because the EFF is doing it. The EFF has been doing this political uh, education since lockdown. I remember lockdown, we could not meet. Um, we said Nicholas was in charge of that political education. We were meeting on Zoom and uh, uh, being uh, educated. He was live on Facebook, like, educating the people of, of South Africa, especially the, the, the fighters of the EFF, to say, this is how EFF behaves. This is how now you see Julius Malema doing the same. Every province, there's some type of political education for the ground forces that they are meeting. Now he's going to the Eastern Cape, I think, on the 10th. It doesn't stop. The ANC, um, it, it might be uh, uh, bad timing in terms of it should have started when Cyril took over. He should have said, I want people to, to go back to political education again. But it's never too late for this. You know, because even if the ANC loses next year, uh, of which uh, many have predicted that, but hey, it's going to be difficult for the ANC to lose. We have to be honest. For the ANC to lose, it's going to be difficult. But, but I'm saying, even if they lose next year, they still need to continue with this because I, I can foresee a situation where the ANC loses power for five years and in the next five years come back to power. I can see that. I can see that. I don't see an ANC losing power forever. I don't know. Um, I uh, once you take out of this leadership, Gwede, uh, Bo, Fikilem, Balula, and uh, this this generation of leadership. Once you take them out, the the the, the generation that's coming in, I've got hope in. I've got hope in the younger generation. Not this nonsense of the youth league now. That not this rubbish now. The, the ones that are there in the trenches that are coming through. So let's just quickly listen to what the ANC is saying about this political education and everything so that we can um, know what to expect next time. 
I'm a pan-Africanist at heart. I don't wish any political, any black political party uh, harm. I wish the ANC good luck. I wish the IFP good luck. I wish the EFF good luck. And um, the people will decide on the ballot paper which political party speaks to their needs. So for me, I, I, I'm not a, I grew up an ANC person, so I'm not a person who wishes the ANC must die completely. Understand? I understand the ANC that we once so loved is no longer there in its entirety, but I still have hope. Understand? Even though I'm leaning to 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 the Pan Africanist side of the EFF, uh, but I'm not I'm not a I'm not a person that wishes any any black person harm or wish them they that they can go down and um, lose and whatever. No, no, no. Unless if they are fighting against me, then it's a different story. But um, as long as uh, it's not directed to me, I wish everyone good luck. I wish everyone a happy festive season. I don't wish, I, you know, even with uh, Sira Ramaphosa, you look at him and you're like, oh, man. he's human, man. Otherwise, he's human. Um, they might have taken uh, any African brother, even uh, with brothers like Bob Penwell, uh, we still hope that one day they will wake up. They will wake up and stop supporting Afri Forum, uh, having a debit order going to Afri Forum every month for 50 rand or whatever it is. We still have hope in that they will wake up. They will wake up. But um, I was saying that to say this. Thank you so much for tuning in on King Said So. This podcast is going to grow. We have moved to, uh, we are going to move to the garage. I just need like a nice background. And I need uh, two beautiful couches. I wonder what color the the couches must be. Probably black will be a safe color, but I want something brighter, like purple or maroon or something like that. So I'll speak to my sponsors. And if you if you feel in your heart you want to sponsor also, please uh, send me an email. I will appreciate it so much, guys. Next year is going to be busy, so we have to interview a lot of people. Some of you are saying, King, bring the DA, bring the DA. Um, I'm working close closely with the councillor of uh, my ward, so it will be easy to bring the, uh, the the leadership of the DA, especially in 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 my province, Northern Cape, to come and do an interview. And I believe um, that is going to happen next year. A lot of leaders are going to come here. EFF, um, uh, what you call uh, um, uh, Patriotic Alliance, uh, everyone is going to come. Everyone is going to come up. I promise you that next year we're going to, I'm going to even have field soldiers who will be working for the channel in other provinces who will be sending us videos. If you want to be part of that program, I'm going to, I'm going to do the advertising, I think, early January to, to say I need people in every province because I can't be everywhere. And I'm not that type of a person who's um, selfish in terms of wanting to be the one who's in the limelight all the time. No, I'm going to give other uh, people who have the same vision as King said so uh, podcast, who have the, you know, that passion for African love. I, oh, I think I have already one in, in Eastern Cape, but I need people in every province um, for them to do interviews, for them to do uh, live visuals and everything. Send them to me so that I can edit them and uh, give it to the, the the population of South Africa. It's going to be big, guys. This channel is going to... We're going we're gonna to take over the political space in terms of podcasting and uh, the pan-Africanist uh, way. We, we're going to take over. I've got, I've got a big vision for this company. And um, we're going to fight to be the biggest podcast channel that speaks about pan-Africanism, that educates its people, that speaks about things that, you know, enhances the black spirit uh, amongst each other and spread the love of no uh, one Africa, one land, no borders, nothing like that. Africans loving each other. This will be the podcast people will be speaking about in Ghana in Ivory Coast, in Burkina Faso, in Mali, in Niger. They'll be speaking about this podcast. And next year, we're taking over. So if you haven't already, click the subscribe button right now so we can reach that 10,000 subscribers as soon as possible. Uh, once we reach the 10,000 10, subscribers, it will be a celebration. We'll be giving some people my book. I said Lynn now, which means I said me too. I've explained so many times what this book um in tiles and what is inside the book uh, it's basically about 
being at a at a, a rock bottom place and you asking yourself why are things not working out for me and i've laid down step by step what i did to get to where i am uh, my my story the story of my life is quite interesting <laughs> it's quite interesting I, um, I was a very interesting young man if i even if i have to say so myself i'm still a young man um but we'll speak about that when we get to 10,000 subscribers if you haven't already clicked the subscribe button leave your thoughts on the comment section and tell me what do you think about this school of education school of uh, politics of the, the ANC let's listen to uh, I think the chairperson of the, the school of education and um, I'll see you guys next time and when we meet next time don't forget to pray until we meet next time don't forget to pray and after you pray stand up and do your best African child so that God can do the rest Pan-Africanism. Peace in Pan-Africanism. I salute you. I am David Makura, the head of political education in the ANC. Uh, this weekend we were hosting a national political education workshop. It's the first of its kind because the National Executive Committee has taken a decision to re-establish uh, the Department of Political Education and really massively roll out political education as part of the renewal of the ANC. We had a very, very important workshop. Uh, this, the outcomes of this workshop are going to the National Executive Committee, but one of the fundamental decisions uh, of the workshop, which is subject to approval uh, by the NEC, so which is a recommendation basically, is that we must have a foundation course. We discuss extensively what the foundation course uh, should be uh, made up of the foundation course for every ANC member. In other words, every ANC member, uh, an ordinary member, uh, those in leadership and those who are public representatives should go through the same kind of foundation training. Uh, this foundation course uh, is something that the workshop has uh, agreed upon uh, to basically ensure that all the uh, members of the ANC, new and old, uh, those who hold particular responsibilities in the organization or in government are going to go through this foundation course. We are launching the foundation course next year uh, as we run the election campaign. But we also agreed that in addition to this foundation course that everybody must go through, uh, we are going to really upscale political education that is directed, that specialized political training directed at people who hold various positions in the organization and those who have also been deployed uh, in government, our public representatives, uh, those who are councillors, MPs and MPLs, but also those who serve uh, in executive positions, uh, the mayors, the, uh, the MMCs, uh, the speakers, the uh, uh, the the M the MECs, uh, 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 the ministers. Uh, so everybody who holds an executive position is going to go through uh, very very structured, systematic uh, training. Uh, uh, and and on the other hand, we will also be rolling out in 2024 a political school in every branch, in every region, in every province. So what we were doing this weekend is to, uh, to basically structure what the content, given the experience that the ANC has had. The ANC has been running political education for a long time, uh, for over a century from the 1920s, uh, uh, together with the, the Communist Party of South Africa and the trade unions. But in just in the last uh, uh, 29 years since the dawn of our democracy, we have also been running political education. So this weekend, we have been reflecting on this experience, what has worked, and why is political education not making a difference in the quality of organization, and why do we have a, the kind of problems and weaknesses that we have. So this, what we have been designing basically is go, going to help us uh, improve the quality of membership, it's going to improve the quality of leadership, but it's also going to improve the quality of work in government. Everybody who's got a responsibility in government uh, has to be trained first and foremost uh, before they are assigned that responsibility. Part of the training is academic, uh, it's formal, but another part of that training is political. 
uh, linked to what the vision of the ANC is and what the values of the ANC are and the, the kind of skills we need uh, from ANC members and ANC leaders to carry out that vision. A lot of problems we have currently are about having people who don't have the adequate or appropriate skills uh, to do what we say needs to be done, to help implement uh, the vision we have for South Africa. So political education is the fundamental pillar of renewal.